Stay tuned for a very important product review from your good buddy, Nick Knack. Hey there, it's your good pal, Nick Knack. You know, normally this show is reserved for talking about the fine art of the plastic figurine medium, uh, aka action figures. But today I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about something that's, well, near and dear to my heart. You know, we all get older, guys, and as we get older, not everything works the way it used to. And we don't look the same as we used to. And doing these videos, I've noticed a little trend in myself, and that's male pattern baldness. So today, I'm going to quickly go over and discuss the fine art of using the product known as Rogaine for Men. Now, as you can see here, I ordered from Amazon.com just recently a three-month supply of Rogaine. I thought, I'd, you know, for 40 bucks, I'd give it a whirl. What the hell? Well, honestly, I didn't make it past my first treatment. So I'm going to give you guys a little education into why this product kind of sucks. Now, I read the directions thoroughly per their own... Um, literature here that was available in the uh, in the box and the thing with Rogaine is that I've learned number one Rogaine for men women should not touch this stuff now I have no idea why it doesn't specify it just says that women should not touch this so guys I guess your lady shouldn't be running her hands through your hair when you're wearing Rogaine that's not good that's a non-starter and here's the other kicker about this stuff not only do you have to wait, not only do you have to use it twice a day, you have to put it on twice a day, and it makes your hair literally feel like you're rolled in a dumpster. Let's uh, let's give you a little demonstration. Now this is the foam. It comes in a foam. It's like it's kind of like mousse from the uh, from the '90s. Now they tell you to use about half of what this cup is right here. So I'm going to spray about half on here. Okay, eh, maybe, roughly, okay. Now you have to use this twice a day. Now they, they, they suggest that you part your scalp. Now you can see my little baldness going on there. It's true. I got it. I'm 42 years old, guys. And, you know, this is, this is an honest moment with you. I'm having an honest moment on YouTube. And you apply it directly to the scalp, really working it in there. Yeah twice a day. Now, I don't doubt that if you do this twice a day for three months, they say, two months, you will see hair growth. And the your male pattern baldness might slow down a bit. But here's the kicker, guys. Here's the kicker. Taken straight from their literature. What if I stop using men's Rogaine foam? Here's what they say. Continuous use of Rogaine foam is needed to maintain hair regrowth. If you stop using Rogaine foam, you will lose your newly regrown hair in three to four months. So here's the kicker. When you start Rogaine, if you want to keep your results, you got to use this shit for the rest of your life. You have to put this sticky, greasy crap on your scalp by the way, it burns every day, twice a day for the rest of your life. You have to sleep with shit in your hair. And who knows if your wife touches it, what the hell's going to happen? If you have prepubescent boys and they touch it, what the hell's going to happen to them? Yes, guys, unfortunately, just like Ponce de Leon himself discovered, there is no fountain of youth. The Grim Reaper is coming for us all. And unfortunately, male pattern baldness is probably going to get us all much, much sooner than that. I wish I could say better things about Rogaine. I just can't, though. Sucks to get old. Really sucks. Sucks. Knickknacks Plastic Planet! With your host... Alrighty, hey, 
So welcome to the plastic planet. Obviously, I'm not in the plastic planet today. As promised, I am visiting and welcome back to the show, my good buddy, Uncle Pat. Thank you for coming back on. Thanks Uncle for having Pat. me. So we are in his humble abode. Um, we're going to check out his 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 man cave or his his man hole. No, that sounds gross. We're no. Not, no, we're not going to check out your man hole. <laughs> but but we're going to check out we're going to check out his collection as well as some other really cool stuff that's going on right here. Um, as as we mentioned in previous videos, Uncle Pat is a fine artist, and he has we're going to we're going to check out some of his um, some of his artwork, which is amazing. And if you like Star Wars, if you like if you like things like Norse mythology and 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 monster hunting and really cool things like that, that's where his speciality is. So we're gonna look a little bit at his, at his artwork. We're also gonna check out his collection, which is fantastic. It's not quite up. It's not quite up as say at Plastic Planet. It's more like a plastic moon, it, right? But you know. it's still, it's, but it's still fantastic. <laughs> So we're going to check that out. We're also going to potentially kill our children who are also here on a play date, but that's yes. okay. Yes. Um, so they're upstairs playing if that's what you're hearing uh, going on right now. But we're also going to we're also going to be brewing some beer, which is fantastic. Patrick has been brewing. How long have you been brewing beer about, for? About two years now. Uh, started since I actually moved into this house. Um, just picked up the hobby because I, I loved craft brew. I loved drinking it and, and started getting into making it. So... We're going to take you through the steps on making an uh, Oktoberfest lager. It's that time of year, so figured, uh, and it's also, ultimately, it's what it's the beer that uh, Nick Knack likes to drink, so that's right, that's I right. figured we'd, we'd, that's we'd, right. take, we'd go down that path. Today. That's right. I do enjoy more of a lighter brew than <laughs> um, than, than, than most. Um, so anyways, yeah, so we're going we're to be getting right into that. We're going to be, uh, we're going to start, what, what do you want to start with? Let's start out by, you and I went on a little run yesterday. We did, we did. And... So we're going to show you a little bit of what we picked up yesterday. Nothing really huge and awesome, but still some cool stuff. Uh, so let's get right to that, shall we? Absolutely. Alrighty, so I got a couple things yesterday. Namely, and most notably, I got this Imperial Royal Guard from the uh, Hasbro Black Series Star Wars line. I'm kind of stoked with him. I just took him out of the package. Uh, obviously, I'm a, I'm a package opener, so I don't leave this too much, too many of these things in the package. I'm pretty stoked with him. He holds his force pike really nice. He's got really nice soft goods on him. Yep. All, all in all, pretty nice figure. And I, I'm kind of back collecting these as I go just because I, I didn't initially get them in, when they first came out. I, I, I tend to bargain with myself, as many people do when I see things in the store. Because, I mean, it's a $20 figure, and I, and I think to myself, well, you know, how does that take away from my ability to buy a Hot Toys figure down the line? <laughs> and so I haven't bought a lot of these Black Series figures, but I'm kind of seeing the worth in kind of back collecting at least a few of them. Um, as I've mentioned before, since I've gotten that 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 nice 40th anniversary uh, collector stage. And I don't know, I, I don't think I'll be able to get all the original 12 backs put on it, but I think I can get a nice ensemble of, of, of Star Wars uh, Black Series figures from different eras within the, 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 the canon of the saga. Yeah. So that's sort of my goal right now. So that's him. He looks pretty nice. I'm, I'm all in all pretty happy with that. The second thing I got is really stupid, but fun. <laughs> Take you back to your childhood. Take, this took me not only back to my childhood, but way back mm. to my childhood. And it also is appropriate being that the uh, Justice League movie came out last week, which I happened to, happened to have seen. I'm not going to talk about it too much right now because Uncle Pat has not seen it yet. But it was a good watch. It was a really good watch. Um, you know, it, it was it was was it the greatest thing ever put on film? No, but it was fun, and that's really all you can ask for for a superhero movie, in my opinion. So I did get these guys, and they basically are like an homage to the little people, you know, from the '70s. And as you if you if you've watched my channel before, I do have a distinct affinity and affection for those just because of uh in an earlier episode as you might know I, I showed off a circus train that i got a 1970s circus train from the uh, fisher price little people line so this is something that just totally like looked like something i would have loved to have when i was four years old because i actually do remember putting electrical tape on one of my little people and pretending it was a cape and pretending he was superman so <laughs> boy i would have died just died five-year-old knickknack would have died to have this so I had to pick them up for five dollars each at Toys R Us. Totally worth it. Well, I think it's also fun to point out. I think one of the neat features, right, is that they're made of wood. So just like the originals were when we were kids. Absolutely. Right. The tactile feel. I mean, I was kind of jealous that you found these and picked them up because it, same thing from when I was a kid. 
Yeah, absolutely. The wood, the wood, the fact that, yeah, you know, I'm going to want to go home and I'm, it's going to take all my uh, impulse control not to put them in my mouth, honestly, and, <laughs> you know, because that's what you did with these when you were a kid. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, you know, anyway, so that, those are fantastic. I picked up those and I'm really excited. Let's talk about your finds yesterday. What did you get? All Let's right, start out so, right here. All right. So this was probably the big one for me. Um, I've been eyeballing this figure for a while. I'm a huge uh, Evil Dead, Ash, and now this, so I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. And of course, this figure is from the Ash vs. Evil Dead series that is on Stars right now. I think the third season is coming up in February. And I love this show. Um, love Bruce Campbell. He's amazing. So this, this, this great, I think it's NECA. I think it's a NECA figure. Um, but it comes with multiple heads, so get different expressions of Bruce, you know, from the stream to a grimace to, you know, he's freaking out a little bit. It's got multiple hands from the show, even has a picture of his car. Um, if you're a fan of the show, then you've seen a lot of the little things that, that this figure brings. Great articulation. Um, you can see he's holding the shotgun up. Um, multiple articulation in all the joints. Uh, yeah. I couldn't ask for a figure. I had to have this. I've got, you'll see in a little bit, I've got a collection of um, Ash vs. Evil Dead or Evil Dead uh, figures. So It is fantastic. You know, Bruce Campbell is such an expressive actor. And, you know, he almost has like a Jim Carrey feel to him sometimes when he just goes over the top. So this, I think this figure really captures a lot of that yeah. essence. It does. It does. They did a great job with the head sculpt and the different expressions for sure. So, yeah, that was the, that was the big one over the course of the day. That was the one that I really set out to find. Um, the next two were, uh, well, unexpected. So we just ran across them. Uh, first up here. Um, Abe Sapien uh, from the Hellboy line. So if you're a comics fan like I am, a big Hellboy fan, uh, when, when I found out that Pop was doing these, the Funko Pops are coming out with the Hellboy line, I had to get Hellboy and I had to get Abe. Um, you'll see my Hellboy in a little bit here, but found him at a GameStop, so that was very nice. Um, and then next up, we've got Admiral Akbar. Oh, um, that's awesome. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. It's, <laughs> it's so cliche at this point. It is. No. Um, and I, we both saw, we both found this figure in a Walmart, in a box marked fake snakes. Yeah, it was, in a, it was, it was tucked away somewhere. <laughs> uh, if you weren't going to get him, I was going to get him. So, but I'm glad one of us got him. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great, obviously the Black Series. Great articulation. I'm looking forward to opening this sucker up. Right. It's uh, a fantastic. That's probably the best three and three quarter inch uh, Admiral Akbar ever done. I think honestly. so. Honestly. Think so. It's fantastic. Really captures the likeness of the character. You know. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see him out of the box. Absolutely. So that's our find. That was, it, was a, it was a good day. You know, nothing uh, nothing too groundbreaking. But still, I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes these putts runs are the best because you don't feel like you broke the bank, but you got a lot of... Fun. Got a lot of mileage for 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 your money. So right. I think we all set out. We, we set out to find one thing. I wanted to get that Ash figure. Um, everything else for us was just just gravy. Just gravy. Yeah, fantastic. All right, so let's get let's get to it. Let's uh, let's let's start looking at your collection. All righty. So super stoked. We are on in in your artistic. What would you call this room right now? As much as it can be, it's a studio. It's um, a studio. Okay. You know, I think it's okay. it's my little creative space. Um, one day I hope to have more space and have a, a room like the Plastic Planet. But for now, as a family man, some of us you know, you know we all have to we all we all have to make decisions and sacrifices, right. don't we? So this is this is my small sacrifice. Should have wore a condom. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're gonna take a look around. We're gonna take a look around. Wait, wait, wait. You're gonna give us a little tour, though. Yep, little, little quick tour. It's a little quick tour. Space, so it but but there's some great stuff in here, and we're, yeah, I'm sure you guys are gonna want to gonna want to check this out. So. Alrighty, so taking a look at your collection, we're going to start on this top shelf up here. There's some there's some fun stuff up here. I'm going to kind of walk towards it and let you kind of let you kind of narrate the way here. So uh, first up, we're kind of looking at my a, a small piece of my Masters of the Universe collection. Um, I'm a huge fan of He-Man. Grew up with them. Grew up with all these figures. Um, Mattel came out with a line a number of years ago now, um, where they basically rearticulated all of the all of the classic. You know, Masters of the Universe figures. So at the top here, you know, I've got the evil Horde with Hordak. Um, I was always pissed off that they made him a She-Ra villain. He was so awesome. He was the, one of the best villains. I he mean, was. Skeletor, you got to give Skeletor his due, but yeah. Hordak was like, he was almost like, I don't know, man. He was, he was my, well, I mean, he was my favorite as a kid. Like him yeah. and Leech there. Yeah, he, he almost, he almost like, he almost like cucked Skeletor when he'd come on the show, yeah. didn't he? he yeah, he A does. few times, you know? He's he like kind of makes Skeletor kind of a bitch, you know? He did. And... Um, in the middle there, you'll see uh, King Hiss. 
Is that is this this crocodile guy up here? No, that's Leech. Oh, sorry. See, see, He Man Masters Universe that's... is not my forte. <laughs> so that's why I got you on the show. Right. If we come over here a little bit there with the snake staff. Oh, okay. There's King Hiss. A couple snake men behind him, um, and, and King Hiss was sort of the villain. There was Skeletor. There was Hordak and Evil Horde, and then the Snake Men came. Uh, shortly thereafter, these were the later. These were now, these, now. Obviously, these aren't vintage. These no. are the, these are the these are the remakes. These are the, the remakes that the Maddie toy line did. The Maddie toy line, and these right. were kind of these were price. These were pretty pricey. Oh yeah, like but, twenty bucks a pop. And yeah, you had to get them. Most of them had to be through a subscription, a year right. subscription, where you get a bunch of dogs. So you couldn't you couldn't cheer, you couldn't pick and choose what you wanted. No, that's a commitment. I mean, that's a collector commitment right it there. It is, and most of this collection I have is is in that fashion. Was through that year, yeah. See, and a lot of them are in boxes because they're. Not that great figures, but <laughs> that's too bad. That's too bad. But the, these Snake Men—they kind of came when we're, we're talking about the original line. These Snake Men kind of came out earlier in the, or later in later the line. Later in the line, they were towards the end of, of when the line came out. Gotcha. Absolutely. Um, and you know, you can see then there's Skeletor and Stinkor. Stinkor did have the smell. He smelled like a skunk, just like the original toy did. They did that with a few with a few of the figures. Um, and you see Beast Man on top of uh, his Griffin there. Oh, that is badass pretty cool yeah oh yeah and if you go down the shelf to the left here you'll see more snake men um cobra Khan's there in the middle and he was actually an original he was part of the original line this before guy they the, determined yep that before, guy right there that guy before okay they determined they were snake men um and then you've got squeeze with lots of s's did, was he was he like did, did those arms stretch out or was he was he like a stretch Armstrong kind of thing? It or? wasn't like a stretch Armstrong, but you could pose and you can with him too. You could pose, bend the bend the arms around however you wanted. Um, and then next, then the other guy there is Ratlore. Um, oh, he's cool. And he had a feature. Now these new ones didn't have it. Cobra Khan had a mist spray. Like you could spray venom, you push. He has a water bottle. He had oh, like a like almost like a hairspray bottle. Yes, yeah, so like, almost like an old school like uh, like a pump uh, uh -huh. hairspray bottle. Right, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, Rattler had a spring feature where his head would snap out of there like like it's striking at you. Um, now obviously these don't have that. They but didn't. They, they went with articulation. They went articulation as opposed to play features. Exactly. So okay. Um, then over to the. The right here, just we get in kind of a mishmash because right. of space. Got some Mego Star Trek figures. Mego Star Trek, yeah. yeah. We got those if you remember. I, I think I got those at uh, Comic a Comic Con. I think you, I Comic think you got that at Sandy in twenty ten, maybe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think I remember that. So, um, and then of course behind them got the uh, the got Greedo, bit... Hammerhead, Walrus Man. Very nice. Got a little glare there, but yeah, we yeah. can see them. Yeah, very nice. There we go. Get rid of those the pops. Glare. Very nice. Pops. When did you get those? Uh, a few, actually, maybe about a month ago. They were okay. like at the beginning of when I started collecting the pops, um, thanks to a, another great collector that we watch on YouTube. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He got me started on this. So very, very, very nice. Yes. Very nice. Um, and then over here on the next shelf, um, and this is where like, I get them grouped together. I've got a bunch of Star Wars pops here. Um, and then that vintage... That 40th anniversary Star Wars, yeah, that's that's Black been, Series stage. That that stage is turning into a money pit for me. Uh huh. Because I was not really interested in collecting Black Series until they came out with that damn stage. Right, and of course you, you know. can see I, I I I haven't I haven't really collected them. Um, I've got a lot of you know, um, uh, Force Awakens and you know, on there I've got a couple of the vintage ones in there, but. It's just sort of a mishmash. But it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't think. I think that stage just just it just highlights. It makes them look nice. It does. It really does. You know. So I don't. I, I don't think it matters if, if you have. You know. Yes, the 40th anniversary would be cool, but the 40th anniversary figures on that stage would be cool. But man, you could put any Black Series Star Wars figure on it. It'd look great. Absolutely. Absolutely looks great. It is a great stage. So, and then if we go up, uh, one more up another shelf, um, you can see we get a little bit more. I got a giant Lino figure. I don't, I've got that at Toys R Us. I think you bought that. I bought that. That was a gift for me, dude. <laughs> right. I don't remember what for. It was your birthday or I don't yeah, know, so just, I just because. Great figure, though. You know, it comes with different swords um, and the claw. Uh, I love that figure. Uh, it captures the cartoon. It really it does. That does capture the essence there. Yep. And then next to him, you've got uh, a mix of my um, Hellboy figures. Um, a couple figures, like, from the animated series they made. I don't remember who made them. Um... But they were more in the animated series fashion that they did. Yeah, that's a nice. Hellboy that's movies. a nice figure. Um, got there's my a, pop Hellboy. Pop. That I just got him. Now who's this guy back here? That's a side. That's an old sideshow. Side that's an the, old sideshow from the Hellboy movie. Yeah. Um, and I've got the Abe Sapien that goes along with yeah, him. Yeah, the Abe Sapien. Yep. Yeah. And you can tell they're very aged, like they're early sideshow figures. Yeah. 
Um, they're still pretty cool. They but, still hold up, but you know, but not not as good as say a hot toy. Oh no, but they're still nice. Exactly, they're still nice. And then who's this? Who's this? Who's this guy right there? That's another ape. That's, that's another ape sapien. Yeah, okay. from the animated series. Okay. So and it looks like you got some more. Uh, and here's where we get into some of the Ash versus Evil Dead stuff. Some more Ash got. pops. And there's the Ash pops. Ruby pop. Alrighty, so and above him is what? Oh, so that's the uh, evil Ash from the movie Army of Darkness. That's another sideshow figure. Yeah, er, um, earlier sideshow, yeah. Earlier sideshow. I've always wanted the Ash that they came out with, but he's harder to find and a bit more expensive. Evil Ash was like twenty bucks. Right. For a you know, I think it was like a sixty dollar figure when it came out. Right. It's a pretty good sideshow. figure. Still nice. It it is. Still nice. All of these still hold up real nice. Absolutely. And there's that Godzilla piggy bank. I have that in my collection. Yeah, absolutely, because it's just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was twenty it was twenty bucks. And... Right. Hey, right. And it looks nice. You know, some of those Godzilla figures are so expensive and that was a twenty dollars and it looks well, pretty comparable, I think. Yeah, he's in a slot hole for coins in the back. Yeah, but you, you know, know, hey. You can weight him down. He can be like a he can almost be like a polystone bus, but he's full of right. coins. That's right. So and then over here we got some Transformer masterpiece looks like. Right, so just trying to, to add some Transformers. I got a bunch more Transformers in storage, but uh, keeping it up with my Optimus my masterpiece Optimus Prime, even though he has the short stacks. Yeah, that was that was a Hasbro <laughs> release, but still nice. The colors on him are nice. Very very G one. Very right? animated. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Very animated. Um, if you go go over to the right, we've got some Soundwave. Um, I think that was a bust you got me actually. Yeah, I think that was a Christmas present for I me. Know, you give me quite a few things. I'm a good um, guy. <laughs> <laughs> with the G one, uh, I just like to transform him into the cassette deck. Cause oh yeah. With the uh, laser beak in there. Right. Of there, right. right. Um, below him, we've got Ooh, Rodimus Prime. Rodimus Prime, which I love. My personal favorite Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Um, both, and that's of course the masterpiece version with and the uh, vintage, with uh, the vintage reissue. Right, fantastic. Yep. That's a great display right there. Absolutely. And same thing with the Starscream over here. Yep, Starscream G1 reissue yep. um, with the masterpiece edition. Right, right. Form, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. And if you want to go down. Oh don't boy! Forget. Oh, there's Trippy. We can't yeah. forget Big Trypticon. Trypticon. Um, yeah, you just got him recently. I did with all those stickers. Got yeah, it. those are a lot of stickers. I was jealous of this one though. I, I really, I, it was between me getting this and the masterpiece Optimus that I picked up recently, and I, you know, I, I don't regret getting the masterpiece, but I'd love to have gotten him too. Yeah, Trypticons. He's he's great. I mean, he's, all of his transforming features. Again, the only thing that sucked about him was the stickers. There was a lot of them. Right. Um, right. And I saw it through to the end. Damn it. <laughs> right. And look at this over here. And then here's my one of my other mini hobbies. Yeah, you're you've got a lot on your plate, man. I do. Yeah. I, I overdo it. Solar yeah. fish tank, um, and yeah, I've I've and I think well, this tank has a lot of stories because it was mine and then it was yours for a long right. time and then you gave it back to me and right. I put it turned it back into a saltwater tank and, and here it is. But adds a lot of uh, sure, calming effect to this room. Sure it's, does. It is nice. It's very pretty. It's absolutely. very pretty when they're not sick. When they're not with, with ick and giving me stress. Right. Yeah. Right. Or fighting or you know. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not when they're not dying. Exactly. <laughs> fish tanks are <laughs> fish tanks are awesome. Right. Yeah. All righty. So moving across, this, this got some artwork up here. Yep. So I mean, I, I don't know to get too deep into it, but a lot of special things in here from um, two original pieces uh, from Guy Davis, who did BPRD for a number of years. Um, he also did a lot of design work for like uh, Pacific Rim. Um, did all the kaiju design work for them. Uh, so. Two, he signed them to me. I love these two pieces. Um, Mike Hawthorne, who does Deadpool now. Oh, very cool. Um, did a commission piece. That's my character, the outdoorsman there. So uh, the guy, that, that's your that's your character, the yeah. outdoorsman, and the guy who currently does the Deadpool comics drew that. He drew that for That's me. amazing, dude. That's, that's, that's a big piece of my collection. That's very cool. That's that's a lot of comic lore there Absolutely. with a with a personalized touch. That's right. That's really cool. And then if you can look at this piece here, this is one of the things from my childhood. You can zoom in on this. Um, this is a letter I got from Jim Davis. When I was a little guy, you know, this was 1985, and when I, uh, as a little cartoonist, when I was drawing, I drew a little picture of a cartoon. I don't remember what it was. And I sent it to Jim Davis because I loved Garfield. And then I got this personalized letter back. Probably, a, probably his secretary typed it up, but he signed it, and regardless of whoever did it, it means the world to me. You yeah, know, that as is. As an adult, to have that. That is cool. From that him. is very cool. If nothing else, even if he didn't write it, he had the the forethought to take the time for his fans to do something like that, and that that's pretty cool. That is cool. Very so. cool. Very cool. Good guy. Yes. So then up here, it looks like we got some more Star Wars love. Yep, yep. Got uh, some of the Hasbro 12-inch uh, book bounty hunters up there. It looks like that's like, is that an old... Uh, that's some, 
That's a marmot, isn't it? That's a marmot Boba Fett that I oh. customized because the paint on his helmet, the red paint, wasn't right. Oh, okay. It was really dark, so I put a red paint on it. Yeah, remember when marmots were the end-all, be-all collectible? Yes, no. I do. And wow. now they're... They're, they're not... They're, they're, they're still, still decent. They're not terrible, but it's, no. it's not... Yeah. Not near as good as what we have from no. Sideshow no. from uh, Hot Toys. No, very cool. Yep. Very cool. Um, some Gel Giant. If you saw some of the Gel Giant up there, too, like that Salacious Crumb... Um, He's a hard guy to find now. He is actually, and he's pricey. When he's when, very pricey on eBay. Yeah, so I was lucky to get him back in the day. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So scrolling down, more He-Man, Dragon Blaster, Skeletor, Spike or Merman. Oh, and nice, <laughs> nice. Um, some uh, Kotoki Yoda. Yep, Kotoki Yoda. Some more Masters. Yep, and that's actually my original Stridor. The horse there is Stridor. Um, that's the remake of of. Um, Fisto, but the Strider is vintage, and that's from when I was a kid. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's actually, always neat when you can mishmash those things, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah, so. old with the new. That's what I'm all about. Yep. And move on down, we've got some other interesting things. Some of my Superman mm -hmm. figures from DC Direct. My Pop, Justice League. Um, Moss Man, my He-Man Battlecat, and Mechanic. Uh, if you look in the back there, you'll see my Boba Fett signed by Jeremy Bullock. Oh, very cool. Look Which is that. super cool. And that is cool. Next to that is my Chewbacca signed by Peter Mayhew. Very cool. Just had an opportunity to meet, you know, Peter and, and Jeremy Bullock at uh, at a convention in, like, Texas, in Austin, Texas, years ago. Yeah, I was like, well, what was that, like 2001? Something like that. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Obviously, Power of the Force were still readily available, uh, those figures. So, that did cool pieces to the collection, though. It was good to meet them. And Jeremy Bullock had... So many cool stories to tell. The guy right. was super fun to talk to. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Didn't Peter Mayhew misspell your name? Yeah, he asked me how to spell Patrick, and and then he, he we had a problem with like how much money I had to give him for the signature. It was, <laughs> it, it was a little wonky, but that's a little that's it's a little still wonky. in my collection. That's, you know, it's it's special because he was in Star Wars, but you know exactly. You know, I guess I guess you know he doesn't want to sign for free. I guess I can sort of understand well, that. But. And Jeremy Jeremy Book didn't sign for free either. I, you know, if nothing at the end of the day, I guess they're all people like we are. So absolutely, they're not always not always one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So then we got, what do we got here? We got some Justice League. Yep, my Justice League pops. We remember we picked those up. Those are fantastic. You got to see that damn movie, dude, so we can talk about it. I know, I know. I yeah, know yeah. And then, oh, look at this. T-Man and, and Battle yeah, Cat. Moss Man. And Moss Man. Is this, now, these are all reissues too, right? They're all reissues. Yeah. Oh, that, that's cool. Yeah, that's but cool. they skipped a lot of the original. Yeah. Original uh, feel. And he smelled like... Uh, like, I don't know, Evergreen or something like that, too. Does, so he, he, still, does he still smell? Uh, He's, he sort of does. It okay. kind of it doesn't last. Kind of weighs away. It does. That's oh, yeah. okay. And neck and neck back there, right? Neck and neck in the back. That's there, very yeah. cool. Very cool. All right, we're going down the shelf here. Now, these guys are cool. I've always been jealous of these two guys in your collection. These are these are what these are DC uh, DC Direct uh, DC Direct like sixteen inch figures, right? They're deluxe edition figures. I, I always dug them because they were that eighty style. Uh, that's my that's some of my favorite stuff yeah, there. Exactly. Look at that Batman. That is sweet. I, I've always been jealous of these. And the costumes fit real nice. I mean, these, these aren't these aren't like new figures by any means. These are a few years old. These yeah, are at they least are. these are like 10, 12 years old now. Dude, yeah, I've had them for a long. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I had the Superman for a while there, and I sold it, which I've always regretted. Which kind of feeds my hoarding. That every time I <laughs> every time I sell anything, I regret, regret it. it. Yeah. And so it's like now I don't ever want to sell anything. It's, it's like hard to let go. I know that there's so many guys that flip their collections, and I did, I can't do it, man. It's like mm -hmm. you know I could. I could sell my children too, but I don't want to do it, you know? Exactly. I suppose I can't really sell my children. But, <laughs> but <laughs> all righty. So, and then down here, these guys, these, this black and white Batman. Frank, tell me. Frank Miller, black and white Batman. That's oh. actually another valuable piece. It's harder to come by these days, and it goes for a pretty penny. Oh, that's awesome. Out there. Um, that's polystone. And then, of course. Um, it's a Batman versus Superman. Batman versus Superman. That's awesome. Another gift from you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a nice friend. Yeah, I know. And you got Batman and Robin there. Yep. Sweet. And looking out the window, the yeah. cops are walking up the street. It's freaking us out. It is freaking me out, man. I don't know what Thornton PD's doing here. Man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The fuzz is on patrol. <laughs> yeah, they're right by my van, too. Dude, I know. <laughs> I wonder if I should go out there and check. Maybe somebody thought we were brewing meth. Maybe. <laughs> Alrighty, hey, so we are out in Uncle Pat's garage right now, and behind me is this whole, like, it looks like he might be, 
Making meth. <laughs> fil <laughs> perhaps filtering urine. But no, he is actually, we were preparing to do a brew here. And uh, what, what, what are we going to brew today? Uncle Pat? Uh, we're going to make an Oktoberfest lager today. So an Oktoberfest lager. A lager is, a, what's a lager? It's just people who are idiots like me. Uh, well, like like a Budweiser or a Miller, right? You're sort of your classic, what would the Americans consider a classic beer? Got it. So we're going to be making a lager beer today. We're going to show you a little bit, not, not necessarily a full tutorial, but we're going to show you a little bit of the steps involved with that. So first thing up is we're, we're getting what ready to do. It's called the mash. Um, where we'll put hot water, basically 174 degrees, into uh, what's called the lauder ton here, which is basically a, what it looks like. It's a converted, uh, converted cool igloo cooler, yeah. So we're pouring really hot water into this cooler. Now what's that filter looking thing at the bottom there? Uh, so that is what's called a bazooka screen, and it is just gonna keep the grain inside here not coming out when we're getting the water. So I'll move this up and then I'll show you the next step in getting this beer going. Okay. So you're setting that down on the ice chest there. So so now what's this step now? What is here? All right, so now we got the best, this is what makes beer. Tastes so good. Now this is this That's is hops. The, this is the grain. This is That's the grain. So it's already been crushed in a mill, but same stuff you'd make bread with. Where did you Where do you buy this stuff? Uh, at a local homebrew shop, Quirky, Quirky's Homebrew. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So you buy this grain. Right. Do you Crush mind if I can? May, may I? Yeah, may, I? may I? Kind of feels like oatmeal. Right. Kind you of smell feels it. Like... it. Smells. Smells like bread. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. So what we're basically going to do here is the thing that one of the things everybody likes about beer is the alcohol. So we're going to have to extract sugar from the grain as well as flavor, like making a tea. Um, we extract the sugar and the flavor from the grain, and later on that'll be used in fermentation to create the alcohol and the other good flavors that beer has. So in order to get the sugars out of this, we have to use really hot water. Um, it varies in the temperature. Uh, we started with 174 degrees. I'm going to shoot for a temperature after everything is in of about 153 degrees. Um, when it's there, then we basically let it sit, and that hot water just sucks the sugar out and the flavor. And then you saw that bazooka tube. That'll prevent the grain from going out when we run it out back into uh, one of our kettles so that we can boil it later on. All right, fantastic. So right now we're going to pour this in. Right now we're going to pour it in. Pour it in the grain. That spoon over there. This spoon right here. Right there. Right there. All right. So we're pouring in the grain into this really hot water. It does. It looks like you're, looks like you're making oatmeal in the break room there. Pretty much. Just make sure it's really stirred around. Look at look how thick that got. Look how thick that is. The grain will absorb a lot of water. And what we also have to worry about is the giant dough balls. Yeah. They'll get stuck together if we're not careful. But basically, as you make, as you mix this up, the grain absorbs the water. It starts a process um, where the enzymes will break down and uh, the sugars will come out. Like there's a, there's a good dough ball for you. Look at that. Right okay. So we have to, so mush we have to that break up. that up, right? We don't want anything stuck together. We want it right. all nice and. So how how long have you been brewing beer now? I think it's been about two years. Two years since now. I moved into this house. Um, two years. I now I remember when you first started doing this, and to your credit, I remember going down to the beer brewing store with you. Right. And you spending you made quite an initial investment. How much of an investment was this at first? Uh, it was a couple hundred bucks for uh, my initial brew kit, which was basically some buckets, one small kettle <laughs> that we'll yeah. use, um, but not my current big kettle. And actually, if you can, if you can see that, temperature-wise, we're pretty darn close to where we want to be. I'm gonna stir yep. it a little bit to sure get that are. temp down. Yeah, this smells like. It smells almost like I can't place it. Almost, it smells it's, almost like it's a bread like, flavor. It's a bread smell. Almost or, like cold. Almost like cereal. Like hot cereal, yeah, maybe. Yep. Yeah. 
oatmeal. Yeah. And depending on the grain we use, there's a little bit of a different smell, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, you know, this is where all of our flavor and our, the majority of flavor in our beer is going to come from. Hops does absinthe, add something, but um, most of it is here and the color. So it's fantastic. That, look at it. Look beer. at it kind of set up there. Is that normal? Yep. That's just all that that breakdown, right? That's that, that's that's the, the sugar breaking down on, and, uh, and it kind of rises to the top. Exactly. Is that what that is? Exactly. Okay. Right, I'll take one last temperature. And if it's good, we'll. So we're about one, what is that? I'll start over. 154. Four. That's fine. I'm okay. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's all right. A little higher than where I wanted. And now all we do is close this up. And just to help with the heat, because what we want to do is keep that temperature about the same for the hour we're going to let this sit so all those good sugars can get pulled out of the grain um just do an old trick just throw a bunch of towels over the top of this cooler. just insulating it basically extra insulation so when we come back later it should stay pretty much where we left it even though an hour has gone by it should stay about the same Alrighty, so while that beer is doing its kind of sciencey thing and we're waiting for it to kind of set up, right? Is that the right word? Sure. <laughs> kind of set up and, and, and we can get back to that in a second. We're going to check out your living room real fast, which is really cool. I mean, uh, I got to point out one thing. I mean, this isn't your man cave or this isn't the basement. Right. This is your living room. And I think it's got to be noted that you are married too. I am married so you're not some sad sack with a bunch of action figures and, and you have a you have a very special lady in your life and she's very cool to let you have this. I just yeah, got to say. Absolutely. So, I mean, very lucky man. I mean, you can see this is the, this is the living room. This is indeed the living room, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So what we're looking at right now is your wall of uh sideshow slash hot toys up here. And you got some really cool stuff up here. And some of this is a little older, but some of this is actually very current. Um, is there any piece in here in particular that really jumps out at you? Um, well, I think I, I just point out that at the top row, uh, down sort of is like oldest to newest. Um, the first two rows are all sideshow, sideshow figures back when we first started collecting. Right, them, right. Right, from our first Jedi Luke to Anakin to uh, all that. And it is on the third row where, where my newest collection has really begun. And that's um, the IG-88, the Forlom, um Old Man Luke there. Right, right. Uh, old Man Han uh, and Chewie. Um, Let's get a good shot of these guys. I'm, these are two, this is a figure that I'm jealous of. I have the Chewie in my collection, but I, I, I should have gotten old... Well, we call them old, old balls, balls, Han, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a little nod to the, a scene out of Big Daddy, the Adam Sandler movie with the guy that uh, left uh, left Adam Sandler's character and 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 or the 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 the, the, the guy that the his girlfriend left Adam Sandler's character for, and he and he was like some professor, and he called him Mister Old Balls or something. <laughs> so we've just always called that. And the sad thing is, is that we're now becoming the old balls guy. But um, anyway, so with the, you got old balls Han here, and he, and he looks great. Right. Um, that's a great looking figure. I love the coat on him. Oh, it was great, yeah. Han I mean, the Hot Toys, again, they, they always do it. The Hot Toys standards is amazing. It is. It really is great, right, with a little bit of extra, you know, some snow effects on mm -hmm. there. Absolutely great yeah. on the Star Killer base there. Very cool, very cool. And then there's the Chewy. Of course, you kind of have him kneeled down a little bit to accommodate your shelf height. Unfortunately, the shelves I didn't quite measure right, so some of my taller characters, Chewy, IG-88, Vader, uh, are where they are and posed how they are because of that, that difference. But right, right. One day I'll be able to accommodate something else. But I wanted it to look nice, uniform, something that could fit in the living room, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. Not, not you know, like that, and, that, and that's one thing, too, with, with any kind of action figure space. And I preach this all the time. It's like you can't, you can't just – you have to – any place you have collectibles has to be a livable space. Right. It has to be a space that you utilize for other things besides storing collectibles. Yeah, you got to enjoy it. you got to enjoy – being able to be in that room and enjoy your collectibles, but do other things too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most of us do not have the space for a toy room. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, even if you do have the space for a toy room, I just, it's well, just my, you visit? it's my personal feeling that there should be other, other reasons to visit it. Absolutely. You know, watch TV to, to kick back, to game in, to work in, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever. Exactly. So anyway, so this is great. That, that IG-88 is fantastic. Um, and we did a review on that Bosque uh, a few episodes yeah. ago. So uh, the Forlom is amazing. 
Uh, Boba Fett's really nice. Someone must have gotten you that too. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that, in all in all fairness, so that was in exchange for some artwork. So, uh, <laughs> so that's that's very cool though. And then of course C three P and R two D two, very cool. And then and then um, and old then balls old balls Luke. <laughs> so again, really cool stuff. This is this is a great setup. I'm gonna pan back one more time and just give everyone just a shot. You know, it's always nice to see other people's collection. Uh, just it gives you inspiration to to, to how to work with your own space. And uh, that's that's why that's why I, I, I never I never would blink an eye at, at coming over and filming someone else's stuff. So absolutely good job, good job, Uncle Pat. This is fantastic. Thanks, man. Alrighty, and last but not least, certainly not least, this is your speciality. I mean, you can brew beer and you can do fish tanks, but this is really what you're good at. You're the best at. And this, this is some amazing stuff here. This is looking at some of your original artwork that you've been working on. This is all current stuff, stuff that's in the works right now. Um, look at that salacious crumb. I mean, that's is now. Tell me about the medium this is on. So this is something I've just started jumping back into because you know for a while I think you mentioned in the other shows I do comic books and that's what I, where I've been focused. But I've actually started getting back into oil painting, um, trying to shift away from comic book stuff, but more towards um, well fine art, illustration, you know that kind of medium. Uh, so I've been to practice really, just focusing on stuff that's not mine, Star Wars, um, not my IP, but. Uh, something I love a lot. So uh, both of these are oil on canvas. Um, you know, photo reference and do drawings, transfer them on, uh, and then just paint them in. Um, and so it's it, it's just a, it's it's something I'm really enjoying doing. It's, it's a different meeting. It's a little more difficult, but um, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, and this this one's this one's done. The Slacious is done. Uh, old man Luke here uh, from Last Jedi. Last Jedi shot. It's still in progress. I'm still working on that. And then I've got something um, secretive and special behind the behind the uh, oh, sheets that I'm working very on. Very cool. So very cool. I'll share with all of you later. Very cool. That's that's amazing. Yeah, this this is over here is secret to be to be uh, revealed at a later date. Yep. This is this is amazing. Now you are selling this stuff, right? Some yep. of this stuff. Yep, that, that's the idea. All of these will be on sale when I. Get them when I get them sort of finished and photographed, and I'll put them in shop. Very cool, I, very cool. And we're gonna shop. and we're gonna put we're gonna put that in the description here, where where you can maybe purchase some of the stuff. We're gonna put that <laughs> in the description here. And um, what what's the site? Uh, site's uh, Blaze Orange Studio, um, and then the store itself is B O S uh, S T O R E Boss Store at or bossstore.storeenvy.com. And that'll be down here. So, um, so anyway, that's fantastic. And if you're interested, you can, you can definitely, uh, if you're interested in buying any of his original art and he's got a lot of it up, um, you can check it out at that site. So amazing. Thank you, Uncle Pat, for showing this off. This is amazing. And, and thank you so much for bringing us into your, into your home and, and letting us film. So oh, absolutely. absolutely fun. Good times. So we're going to finish up that beer and, uh, and yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's all fun from here. Awesome. All right, so this is what we have left. This has been all been siphoned down into this down here, which is now the, what you called the beer tea, correct? Yes. Okay. Technically called wort. Wort. This was driving me nuts. I could not place what this smelled like. And it, it smells like freaking grape nuts. <laughs> I just I couldn't place it the whole time. And it kind of looks like grape nuts. I remember when I'd like, I'd like make mountain ranges out of my grape nuts when I was a kid. That looks like freaking grape nuts. Yeah, it does. Totally. That's what it is. Damn it. Hot cereal, well, like you said, like, hot cereal. Like hot cereal, right, but grape nuts especially. That was weird. Cool. Okay, so so what we're going to do with this now is we're going to boil this, right? That's correct. And so how long do we boil this for? Uh, so we're looking at an hour boil. An hour boil, okay. And then we'll add things like our hops into the boil at certain intervals to give us certain flavors. So. Okay, fantastic. And then from the boil, it goes into this, you call this is called a carboy, right? Carboy, yeah. And then right now it's it's got some sanitizer in it. Yep, some food sanitizer to make sure there's any bugs in there. We kill them. Um, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll empty that out. When we cool the wort down later, we'll add it, and, and then it's ready to it's ready right. for yeast. Ready this to feels it. really complicated. Now what? Now let's say I'm just a dumb shit and I want to go and uh, and start doing this. What would you recommend? Well, go, finding a local homebrew store is the biggest one. There's always in Colorado, there's a, number, there's a bunch of them, right? Usually guys that are very smart, have been doing this for a while, know all the answers. Um, but the, the big thing is I bought that, when we mentioned earlier, I bought that kit for 200 bucks. Um, it used a different kind of brewing called the uh, malt extract, where all of this process we're doing here to extract sugar, 
was already done for you. It comes in a nice little can that's all just liquid sugar basically in flavor and all you have to add is some grains to get the tea, get the flavor and then during the boil you add it in. So it's super, it's super simple. Um, this is the more advanced stage that... Right, you're at about, you're like an intermediate level here, huh? Yeah, exactly. So right, right. Not, not an expert by any means. Right, if, you, this was, if we were playing Madden, you'd be playing on pro level. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah, so there's lots of stages, and that's the beauty of it, is anybody can get in at any point um, and, and learn it. It's super easy to do, especially with an extract kit as opposed to all grain. This is called all grain brewing. So I'm not using extract, I'm using a big thing of grain. Right. Right? So. All right. Simple as that. All right. All right, well, thanks for showing us this process today. Obviously, after you boil it, how long does it stay in the um, fermenting stage? Is that correct? Right. Since we're doing a lager, um, we're, what we're going to do is um, ferment this at 45 degrees in my special keg or uh, freezer fermenter that I've put together with the temperature controller. We'll put that at 45 degrees, let the yeast do its thing, um, and then when the yeast is finished, we'll basically do what's called lagering, which is cold storage. We'll drop the temperature in this thing down to 35 degrees and let it sit for about four to six weeks, um, at which point then we can put it in a keg and All right. the CO2 so, and drink it. So we're gonna come back when this is done and we're gonna drink this, just so we can put a capper on this. Absolutely. Not in this video, but in a future video, we're going to come back and drink this beer that we made today. That's right. All right, that's a promise. In February. In February. So in February, whenever we're, yeah, we'll sounds great. Get a chance. Sounds great. All right, well, hey, thanks for showing this process today, Uncle Pat. Absolutely my pleasure. Glad you guys could uh, check this out. So right now we're boiling the, uh, the tea as we're it is. Boil. We're waiting to boil. As it is. Yeah. Now when do we add the hops in? At certain points in the boil. Alright, All right, so now we're actually adding something in. What are we doing right now? We're doing our first hop addition. And hops are in there for bitterness uh, and ultimately to prevent spoilage. So, let's take a look at that. Look at that, they're all... You smell one of those? They look like... They're, now these are hop pellets. So... Oh, they do smell. Oh, they're cool. Right? Just throw it in? Put it right in there. In the thing? Yep. In this thing? Yep. Right, put it right in here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, simple oh, as that. That's cool. All right, so we've just added hops into our boil here. All right, those are Tetnang hops, um, specific hop variety. There's multiple kinds. They all do different things. Flavor and bitterness and aroma. Very cool. Well, I don't know about you, but I had a great time visiting Uncle Pat this week. Uh, we had a great time over at his house. We kind of ran out of time, kind of ran out of footage, but uh, we're going to go back and try that beer as soon as it ferments or whatever it does. And uh, that's going to be awesome in a few months. So anyway, thank you, Uncle Pat, for having us over. I had a great time. No bonus time this week because we kind of was a really long video. And thank you so much for hanging with us uh, through that whole thing. Really appreciate that. So as always, please like and subscribe. Really need that to happen. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for all my new subscribers out there. And uh, in the meantime, you know what? Hey, uh, you know what? Keep, keep, keep collecting shit, guys, because it's fun. It's fun buying stuff. Maybe dumb, but it's fun. Right? Yeah.